Hey everybody, thanks for coming and joining us on the Shop Tour 2022. This is my two car garage workshop that I have in my house that I built two years ago. When we built the house, we did not envision this being a wood shop. We envisioned my wife's car being in here and all of our kids stuff and you know, some storage and things like that. Luckily, we did have the foresight of building the garage with an 11 foot high ceiling. So we do have a lot of height and you'll see that I've transitioned a lot of that into our family storage where all of my stuff's down on the bottom. Um, luckily, the space is large enough where I'm able to fit large things like my CNC machine, table, etc. Uh, and I still have room to be able to construct large projects like poker tables that I build and being able to work with sheet goods without being too cramped in here or having to go outside to do some of my cutting. So I am happy with that at least. Um, so come on and join me and let's check out the shop. So this is the miner station. This is the very first thing that I built out in my shop when I was building the house. A lot of the things that I was doing in the house was a lot of the molding work and things, different finishing items. And so you're gonna be using your miter saw for that for the majority. And so this is actually a plan that was actually from Anna White. Make sure that you check out the, her link in the description below. She has a lot of great woodworking projects. And I had seen this project when I was looking around for what to do. In her project, it's only the lower half right here of the miter station, and then I added all of the shelving on top to kind of fit my needs uh, based on how I wanted to have it. So the cool part about this setup is it has a lot of modularity to it. So now let's talk about the actual miter station functionality of the unit. Uh, on both sides, we have T-Track that goes 58 inches from the blade. Uh, for that, I can then run a stop block on both sides, which I like quite a bit. We're actually going to be replacing the fence with an extruded aluminum in an upcoming video, so make sure you watch that one. Uh, we'll definitely be making this even snazzier than it is right now. The enclosure for the uh, miter saw we do with magnets. And in reality, I don't even know if I need the larger section of the enclosure anymore that I'm taking off. Just because I replaced the standard metal fence that comes with this miter saw with a custom maple fence that I had created. And behind here, we have a box that I'm feeding my four inch suction hose through. And the amount of suction force that I'm getting off of here really pulls in about 75, 80% of the dust particles that are coming off the wood. As long as I'm bringing the saw down closest to the fence first and then pulling away, which is what you should be doing anyhow. Um, that way you're creating a trough for those sawdust particles to travel into the zero clearance section of the dust shroud there. So the right cart over here I have set up as dual purpose, mainly on the top. I use it for spray painting and finishing work on small projects. I'll just roll it out. I don't care if I get it dirty. I don't care what it looks like. I'm just going to town on it. Uh, it's an extra large work surface that I can pull out and then get rid of it any time that I want to. Below that we have my planer and some of my dust collection accessories that I have a little space to, to shove into as well as on both sides there's little cubbies for dust extraction stuff. The top here removes by lifting up and so that way when I'm using the uh, planer I'm able to feed boards through, grab them, put them back up top before they send them back through again. So that's nice. It also gives good access to the handle right there. I wanted to take a break to talk about my sponsor, safetysourcesupply.com. They're a discount retailer of name brand, new in box tools at up to 50% off retail. They want their customers to be happy with their purchases. So they only want me to give completely honest reviews, which is the only way I'd be willing to do it anyhow. Honesty builds trust in the customer, and since they're a retailer, not a manufacturer, they don't care if I say something negative about a tool. If I think it's junk, they'll just stop selling it and sell something else instead. So if you're a tool lover like I am, I need you to know about safetysourcesupply.com. Right now, there's a Milwaukee Red Lithium 5 amp hour battery that retails for $149 that they're selling for $55.99. Batteries are expensive, so when you see an amazing deal like that, you need to jump on it. Make sure you bookmark safetysourcesupply.com. They change their deals all the time and are constantly getting in new products at amazing prices. I was a customer before they sponsored this channel, so I can attest to the phenomenal prices on this site. 
So go check out safetysourcesupply.com. They are the source for the best prices of tools anywhere. This pullout section is my router table. And what I've done here is made an incredibly large surface for a router table. Uh, I do a lot of rock climbing boards. And so you'll find that a lot of my stuff is a little oversized just because I'm doing things on really large boards that I wanna have the extra support for. Um, I just recently made a new router table fence right here from uh, extruded aluminum and Rockler attachments. So pretty much all of this I purchased over at Rockler. Uh, very happy with it, very sturdy and lots of options for me to be able to mount things to the rails. Underneath I made a suction box so that we're collecting all of the dust out of here. And as we rotate the unit, we'll see that it's a two hookup where my two inch hose is connecting in with my four inch hose on a splitter on the side. That way it's sucking from the box and it's sucking from the uh, router fence at the exact same time. So getting pretty good dust collection with this thing. So this is my power tool station right here. I have all my battery chargers over here on the side, which then when my 15 batteries are done charging, I can line them up in this trough right here. All my screw guns, drills are all over here, impact drivers. I keep a magnetic strip on both sides just for my most, you know, normally used bits. That I'm... Here's my nail gun storage as well as storage for my glue and heat guns. Below, I've made a dado tray to hold all of my nail gun clips. Uh, here on the left, I have a section for my 23 gauge pin nails. In the middle, I have my 18 gauge brad nails. And then on the right, I have my 16 gauge finish nails. So this section of the garage was the second thing that I added on as I started to expand out in the garage. And this is more of a hybrid area because we have family stuff on the bottom and party on the top, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, here we have our uh, chest freezer, which I have the removable top right here. That way we can get to it easily. Over here we have our recycling. And at the end, we have all of our cardboard recycling on this rollout cart. That way, we can easily put large boxes in here, roll it away. And then, unfortunately, every two weeks, we have to pull it out and bundle it with twine. We don't have the type of recycling that'll let us throw it into a bin. Over here, we have our shoe storage for the family. This is where we put all our shoes when we come in for the day. And then over here, we have all of our small clamps, followed by all of our larger Bessie clamps up on top, some of my pipe clamps and bar clamps. And then over here, I do a lot of videography with this is my background, so a lot of pretty stuff, automotive tools, um, some measuring uh, gauges and whatnot, cleaning supplies, uh, corner clamps, pull saws. And then, of course, you see the logo for my new uh, sponsor, safetysourcesupply.com. Super stoked to have uh, this company sending me tools to review online. This is my Edge Star 1400 BTU air conditioning unit that I have. Um, I have it direct vented out through the back of the wall and on the exterior of my house, I have a dryer vent that I just put on the side of it. So it just blends into the rest of the house. Um, this 1400 BTU unit will keep this two car garage at a nice temperature throughout the even you know hottest parts of New Jersey's summer, which isn't like Florida or anything, but you know, we do get up to 90 degrees, even 95 degrees. So this does a great job at keeping the shop at a nice temperature. This is my accessory cart. And so it's a system that I've mounted a lot of my smaller tools to that I can place them on this cart. And what I've just done is put a three quarter inch piece of wood at the edge. And so any one of my tools, I can just place up top into this gap and it's gonna keep it nice and secure. So this is the epoxy glue and screw area over here. So I have my top lined with silicone mats so that any glue spillage or any epoxy spillage, um, it will easily come off of these mats. So I have my epoxies over there, all my different pocket hole screws kind of mounted to the wall here silicone brushes, and then my tape station for uh, grabbing anything. Up above, we have all of my wood storage, which is really sparse at the moment, just because it's just really expensive right now. So this is my new baby. This is my 30 by 30 long mail CNC machine. I've had it for about two months now, and I'm having an awesome time 
playing around with it and seeing all the different features that it has. We're going to be making our own video and putting it out, so link below in the description to check out how we made this crazy enclosure that it is. Um, it keeps the entire thing really quiet. You can't hear it inside, and there's even a shop vac attached to this that you know we've completely deadened the sound coming from. Um, so it's a very interesting video to watch, so make sure you check it out. I do want to point out that uh, we totally did a bender uh, knockoff on our CNC machine. There's a really famous YouTuber, I can't remember his name at the moment, but we're going to be sure to put a link down to his video down uh, below where he also did the same thing to his Shape Oko machine. And I showed that to my kids, and my kids love Futurama, and they were like, oh yeah, Dad, you gotta, you gotta make Bender. So, of course we made Bender. So, thanks to him for that cool idea from his video, and check out his video below. So this is the Rikon 10326. This is my new band saw. I just got this pretty recently. And this is that jump from going to a hobbyist saw into like a semi-professional saw. And can't say good enough things about it. That I can't say a good enough thing about it. So this is one of those good things that I found at a garage sale. I got this Craftsman jointer for $75 and it was a giant load of rust. Um, the guy didn't know if it worked or not, but I said, you know what? Like, this is the type of tool that doesn't die. So I bought it, I spent two days just scraping all the rust off of it, and it turned out to be a fantastic joiner. Um, because it's old, it had no dust collection capabilities, so what I ended up doing when I reassembled everything was I put hot glue around the edges because there was a lot of gap right there and then I constructed a wooden feeder box underneath to grab all the wood chips as they came and I permanently installed a dust right port for my four inch hose and I can say that I get 95 percent of the dust chips wood chips going through the dust collection system so this has really turned out to be uh, a very nice jointer for me um, I probably will upgrade it to a, a larger capacity, but you know, for what I use it for, this, this has worked out really well. One awesome feature that you can add to any table saw is to add on a folding wing that comes onto the side. And we're going to have another link down below that shows you our video on how we made this wing. And we did it in a really ingenious way because not only does this wing just pop up pretty easy, but it has a folding leg feature that was taken directly off of a $35 folding table. And so literally just utilizing that mechanic underneath this board gave you a folding table that's perfectly level with where you want on your table saw. So this is one of my pride and joys that I've built. And this is a standing desk for my drill press. So it's a large drill press table, but it's also a utility table that we can use throughout the shop. Um, I'm going to be posting a video, the link will be below, on how we built this wonderful desk um, because I use it all the time. So now we come to the fabulous, awesome um, outfeed table, torsion box, assembly table, workbench, you know, everything all and above that my garage pretty much centers around. Um, this was done by another awesome YouTuber. Uh, we're going to link down below to his woodworking channel. I purchased the plans from his channel. I do feel when, you know, people go out there and spend the time and put a nice creation out there and they have the plans for sale, you know, yeah, I could figure it out myself, but I went out and bought his plans just to kind of show him a little bit of love for, for doing such a nice project. Um, this is a torsion box setup, so uh, the top is perfectly flat by sandwiching these two. This section down here is filled with wood blocks so that I was able to put the dog holes in the top so that I can easily utilize uh, some of my dog hole pins for, you know, assembly. Down on the bottom, I have some of my medium-sized tool storage as well as all of my different types of sanders uh, below. Here I have my drawer full of painting supplies, so brushes, wipes, rollers, and right next to it I have all of my sanding supplies. So we've done a dado box track where I can separate all of my different oscillating sanding pads and then I have the remaining sanding stuff behind. Top is lined with T-Track as well. 
Um, I have a lot of T-Track hold downs for a lot of different things, so you know it's easy for me to grab T-Tracks. Um, I use T-Track a lot in the CNC machines, so um, it's kind of what I gravitate towards. The surface underneath is very thick, so I was able to drill uh, very long screws down in there, so I don't have as much concern if I'm using a very heavy torsioned um, lever pull down. So, you know, that's sometimes a problem with people with T-Track. It'll rip the T-Track off because it's so much pressure. Um, but I have screws that are so deep that it's not a problem for me. At the other end of the table, we have my smaller hose hookup for my palm sander, for my um, small router and everything else. So I'm utilizing a, ra a Rockler Dustrite 4-inch um, to 2.5-inch or 2.25-inch. Um, connector that way this connector then plugs into all of my different small parts tools uh, when I'm using them at the table here and then when we look at the inside of this table 99% of the time this side of the table is up against my table saw so I really don't utilize any of the small cubbies or anything I recently decided to put a uh, um, enclosure box for small pancake um, air compressor and then that feeds through this box to my air hose at the end. I really only use this for the air hose blower functionality. I don't use air tools and so a small pancake is really all I need but keeping with my concept of trying to keep all the noise down in the shop so that it doesn't bother my family if I'm out here at two o'clock in the morning building something. Um, I used a baffle system with this and just like I did with the CNC machine. All of this is insulated on the inside and then I have ventilation that comes through a top honeycomb area where the air has to pass through in a snake fashion and we'll, we'll put a photo up of what it looks like on the video. And that way it eats all the sound from the compressor uh, and so it greatly reduces the sound of a noisy compressor which, you know, if you have a compressor, you know, they're noisy. Um, and then I just use some paint storage down at the bottom at the end there. So that's the shop tour. Thanks so much for, for watching the video all the way to the end. We're a brand new channel. It would mean the world to us if you would click subscribe and like just because we're trying to get up there in the standings and you know, you watch to the end. So hopefully you saw some cool stuff that you like. I hope you maybe saw a couple things you might adapt for your own shop. I tried to make it the best that I could for the space that I have and you know, the tools and whatnot that I have. So. Um, I hope to see you on the next video and